Hi. In this video, I'd like to explore um, basic microstructure evolution uh, in a uh, binary isomorphous system. So I've gone ahead and I've sketched a binary isomorphous phase diagram over here. Two components, A, B, so it's binary, two components, A and B. By convention, composition axis is expressed in weight percent B, composition axis expressed on the horizontal axis, temperature on the vert vertical axis. We don't need to really worry about what the units of temperature are for this generic example, but just for completeness, I'll say degree C, because that's common. <clears throat> High temperature, it's all liquid. Low temperature, it's all solid. We're going to call it the alpha phase for the, uh, the solid phase. So what I want to explore is I want to explore what the microstructure looks like at a few different temperatures. T1, well up into the, um, into the um, liquid region above the liquidus. And then uh, another temperature just below the liquidus, OK, and that's going to be T2. And then another temperature still in this two-phase region. Oh, I didn't uh, label that, did I? So this region here is two-phase liquid plus alpha. All right, that's two-phase liquid plus alpha. <clears throat> uh, so this third temperature that I want to explore is this temperature T3 just above the solidus. And then let's explore again below the solidus and call that T4. What does the microstructure look like? <clears throat> okay, so first of all, when we explore microstructure, often we just draw a circle, kind of like what would it look like if you looked at this system through a microscope? And this is your field of view. That's why we often draw it in a circle like this. So of course, at temperature T1, it's above the liquidus, well above the liquidus. It's entirely liquid. Um, and so, <clears throat> you know, we could, we could describe the system fully by saying it's 100 percent uh, liquid, and what's the composition at composition equal to C naught? And I've identified that over here, C sub zero. That's no surprise. So let's get things a little more interesting and then say, OK, we continue to cool down. The atoms are moving around. they got a lot of kinetic energy. It's in the liquid state of matter. You cool it down, and some atoms bump into each other. They may nucleate on some other um, impurities or something like that, but that's for another another. Uh, course, essentially they just slow down, they, they form little crystals, nuclei, and the nuclei get big enough and they grow and they start to, uh, you know, they form metallic bonds and they form a crystal structure. So at T2, we've, we've crossed below the liquidus and the atoms are slowing down sufficiently that we're starting to form some solid. So again, the, what's the microstructure going to look like? Well, it's going to be largely liquid, but there's going to be <clears throat> some little clumps, some little clusters of atoms that have slowed down. Um, and they slowed down enough that they started to form the solid state of matter. But the, the, the next question might be, OK, what, what are the, what's the solid made of? I mean, I can label it here and say it's alpha. right? These are all solid alpha particles. But is it A or B? Or is it both? You, know, you, you might be led to believe, well, if the higher melting temperature is B, for example, perhaps B is what solidifies. Well, it's not. In fact, um, if I go uh, back over here you know, and I, I draw in some, um, some atoms, we're going to see that there's going to be a mixture of both the red and the blue atoms. <clears throat> in fact, if I drew it really carefully, there would, in fact, be more red atoms, not really worrying about counting, but there would be more red atoms than blue because our composition is towards the A side. There's more A. But then <clears throat> when I start to solidify, I can go ahead and I can draw a tie line, and that's going to give me the composition of the solid that's existing at this temperature. And you can see, well, the composition of that first solid to solidify is actually more towards the B. So that means I would need to draw more B atoms more of the blue ones into these solid uh, alpha particles. OK. There's still some A, uh, some A. There's some red atoms. But there's more, more of the blue ones. And really, I should have draw, you know, drawn that as a, as a crystal structure. There's going to be some long range order to these things. Um, but uh, we'll leave that for another lecture. <clears throat> the liquid is actually depleted. In, in B, it's got more A. You can see the composition of the liquidus there is, is, is towards the, um, the A side. So in fact, in the remaining liquid, there are more A atoms and 
relatively speaking, fewer B atoms. Okay, um, if we continue to cool down, T3, just above the solidus now, <clears throat> is going to have those same particles, uh, alpha particles, but they've gotten bigger. So I'm just going to try my, my best to kind of draw what they might look like if the grain boundaries had gotten bigger, but their position stayed the same. And these are all alpha, single phase alpha, and the rest is liquid. <clears throat> and we can, again, we could describe it. We could draw a tie line, and we would say that the composition of the solid is going to be drawn by the intercept of the tie line with the solidus, the composition of the liquid with the interception of the tie line and the liquidus. So again, now they're, they're, they're different. The, the, different from what they were at temperature 2, but as well, they're both depleted towards the A-rich side. They're, they're, there's more um, A, but there's a difference between the two. The, the solid still has a higher composition of B, should have more blue atoms than the liquid, but they're both less than they uh, were before. The mass balance is maintained, of course, because the alpha particles are getting larger. So I should draw the liquid um, with more A. And I could, in fact, I could quantify that for you if you wanted. I could, so I could say now it's <clears throat> alpha at composition C, alpha corresponding to the tie line drawn at T3, and it's going to be liquid at composition C liquid corresponding to the uh, <clears throat> composition at uh, T3. And so then finally, T4, those same particles have just gotten uh, big enough now that they've run into each other, essentially. And you might have something that looks like this, where it's entirely solid alpha with a composition of C0, which again is going to actually be the same blending of red and, and, and blue. Um, and it's distributed now homogeneously across the entire solid. Um, a, a little bit more red than blue because our overall composition was towards the A side of the phase diagram. Thank you. <clears throat>